Evangelist Carolyn Benson, co-pastor of High Point Christian Tabernacle. Now, High Point is located at 3269 Old Concord Road, right here in the city of Smyrna, Georgia. Now, as we worship virtually, it's our goal and objective to keep God's people encouraged and inspired. We have hope that soon we will be able to worship again corporately as the Lord lifts this pandemic. But until then, the Lord would have us to revisit our past here at High Point so that we can appreciate our future. So we want you to join us as we continue our blast from the past. Let's go into a service that's already in progress. Be blessed. Come on and just take a few minutes and let's just give God praise for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. If you're not standing, please stand with us. We've come to the most important part of the service. It's time for the word. Praise God. You know, I was just thinking about how in this day and time, we really need the word. And if you don't understand why, just watch the news. Just some of the things that we've seen over the last few weeks. We saw the young man in New York who was drugged out of the, uh, the store and stabbed multiple times, chopped with a machete, crawled to the hospital where he died. A young man here in the Atlanta area just watching how he stabbed his sister. She was 15 years old. He stabbed her 53 times because she took too long in the bathroom. My wife was telling me a story about a murder-suicide well, where not only did the guy kill himself, but he killed his one-year-old child. We're watching on the news any given day. We see how people are going into schools, shooting up the schools where our children are, going into the workplace, shooting up the workplace. So anytime we're able to come in here on a Sunday, walk in alive and hear the word, we ought to give God praise. We ought to tell God thank you because it could have been another way. It could have been me. So I thank God for another chance to hear the word. Hallelujah. We thank God for our pastors. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for pastors who are anointed to preach the word and who watch over our souls. We thank God for our first lady, our co-pastor today, who's going to be bringing the word. So put your hands together as we welcome our own co-pastor, Dr. Evangelist Carolyn Vincent. Amen. Come on, let's give God that praise. Let's give God the highest praise. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God.
Hallelujah. Come on and give God a great big hand praise. Thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. Amen. As my son was talking, there's so much trouble in the land. Amen. But we should be ever so appreciative for salvation today. Hallelujah. I want everybody to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you today. We honor you. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, God, we ask, Lord, that you give us the unction of the Holy Ghost on today. Send a rhema word that's going to leave us both challenged and changed. We bind the adversary who has already tried to come to hinder us. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, we take authority over the devil today. Satan, you have no power here. Oh God, open up the ears of your people today that they may indeed hear what the Spirit is going to say to the church. Have your way. Save God the unsaved. Reclaim the backslider. Wash us, cleanse us. Oh God, let us leave here better than what we were when we came. Oh God, send your word and heal us. In Jesus' name we pray, God, we're clapping our hands. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands and give God thanks and praise. Hallelujah. Amen. And while you're clapping, while you're standing, we honor the Lord who is ahead of our life. Let's give God a great big hand praise. He deserves it. Our hallelujah belongs to him. Our thank you, Jesus belongs to him all of our worship belongs to him amen and let's honor the man of the house our apostle thomas harrison vincent our wonderful husband amen we honor our service conductors today amen the elders that are in charge we honor all of our elders our deacons saints and friends you can be seated in the presence of the lord amen it's good to be back with you Amen. And we certainly trust that everybody got a good amount of rest and that you enjoyed your week off. And I see some people extended their week. Amen. And um, that's okay. Amen. But we trust that everyone will make it back safely over the dangerous highways and airways. Amen. We thank God for giving us some rest in our bodies. Amen. And I want to thank uh, all of the ladies that came out and supported us on, amen, uh, June 30th, amen, as we spoke at uh, the prayer breakfast. And several of the saints came to be with us. Amen. And we certainly appreciate you. Amen. And thank God for the rest that he gave us. Amen. But now it's back to business. Amen. The business of the Lord. Amen. And we want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. We're going to be reading some verses there. 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verses 9 through 11. We're also going to get Romans 3, reading one verse there, verse 23 in Isaiah. Amen. The first chapter, one verse there, verse 18. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, Romans 3, 23, Isaiah 1, 18. And while you're getting those scriptures, we want to put emphasis on, amen, vacation Bible school. Amen. We thank God for our pastor, amen, and the balance that he has added to our service schedule. Amen. And we... Again, want to say that we're looking for 100% participation this week. Amen. There will be services starting on Tuesday night. Amen. We're going to get started early so we can get out early. But there's going to be classes for all ages. Your children will be fed. All you have to do is come. Amen. And Pastor 
has allowed us to uh, come casually dressed. And I say that with a grain of salt. Amen. We know what's appropriate. Ladies, if you have some nice slacks and a top, you can come. Amen. We don't want, you know, shorts and all kind of, you know, stuff like we're going to the beach. Amen. But we want to dress casually and be comfortable during the week. Amen. And then on Friday, we have that great outdoor celebration. And I'm telling you, the choir is going to be singing, going to be doing karaoke. Amen. If you've always wanted to sing your favorite song and you've been shamed, we're going to hand you the mic filled so you can belt it on out. He, he said, okay, I'm going to do it too. Amen. You can sing his favorite song and we're all going to get with him. Say, Brother Phil, we didn't know you could sing like that. <laughs> Amen. But we thank God because we're going to have fun all this week. Serving the Lord is not boring. Amen. You ought to enjoy what you do. This is our fun. This is our life. Amen. And then just think about all the wonderful fun we're going to have when the Lord comes to get us out of here. Raymond, everything's going to be over. No worry. No murder. No hatred. No jealousy. No envy. No strife. No death. God is going to wipe away every tear. Amen. So God wants you to enjoy the trip even here. Hallelujah. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I've done? No matter what we go through, just having the Lord on the inside. I think about that song. We have come to praise and magnify the Lord. You know, but then it goes, for all he has done. And for the through the good times, the happy times, and in the sad times, having you there made the difference. Just having you there, Amen. So I'm a win. I don't care if you've been on your bed of affliction. Sick as a dog, just having him there made the difference. <laughs> Amen. Because I know if I died, I'd just step on over in the glory. Amen. What a blessed assurance. Songwriter said, Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forte of glory divine amen you better have that assurance that blessed assurance amen because you don't have fear in your life you know where you're going hallelujah now that's not the subject read first corinthians 6 verses 9 through 11 what does that say know ye not read that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Read. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of them with mankind. Read, amen, read. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, yes. nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. If you're practicing those things, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Read. And such were some of you. And such were some of you, yes. But ye are washed. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. Yes. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. And by the spirit of our God. And by the spirit of our God. Now what does Romans 3, 23 say? For all have sinned. All have sinned. And come.
come short of the glory of God. And come short of the glory of God. Isaiah 1, 18. Come now. Yes. And let us reason together. Yes. Saith the Lord. Yes. Though your sins be as scarlet. Though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson. Though they be red like crimson. They shall be as wool. They shall be as white as wool. Amen. I want you to take your neighbor by their hand, cooties or not. Look them straight in the face and say, me too. Turn to the neighbor on the other side and say, me too. Me too. Me too. Amen. Now, if you've been at all paying attention to the news at all here lately, you are aware of a national movement that has recently dominated our news cycles. And in fact, on this week, the president was making fun of the people and making light of their situation. But this movement is called the Me Too movement. It primarily consists of women, and there have been a few men throughout the nation who have decided to come forward to admit that they have been sexually harassed or sexually abused by a trusted person, usually by someone that was in a position of power or by somebody that was an authority figure in their lives. And many of them have now decided that they're going to tell their stories publicly. In fact, by so many people coming forward Amen. Elder South Hall, it has emboldened others. And people are now coming out of the woodwork. It's freeing them. And they're saying, oh my God, if that happened to them, that same thing happened to me. So now, me too, I'm, I'm going to come out and tell my story. Hey, me too, that same thing happened. To me, thus the birth of the Me Too movement. Amen. And the Lord pointed out to me that united in their cause and by simply coming forward and telling their stories, hundreds of men and women have now decided that they want their abusers to be identified. Not only am I going to admit to sexual harassment and sexual abuse, but I'm going to tell you who did it. They want justice for the debilitating humiliation that they suffered at the hands of their abusers. So they're coming out and they're naming names. Whisper to your neighbor and say they're naming names. Mm. It is disheartening to say the least to hear that some of the world's most famous, some of the world's most beloved, some of the world's most honored, most trusted people have now been named and accused of committing these abuses. Sadly, many of them have been accused by more than one person. Oh my God, women start coming out of the woodwork saying I've been 
abused by this person. Names like famed comedian and philanthropist Bill Cosby, famed interviewer and newscaster Charlie Rose, even actor Morgan Freeman, that silk velvety manly hunky voice has been named. All of these famous beloved men have now been accused, shamed, and publicly humiliated. Consequently, jobs have been lost. Reputations have been ruined. Careers have been ruined. Things that they spent their whole life building. Think of Bill Cosby. He's given away millions of dollars to colleges because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And he's bestowed millions of dollars in endowments to Spelman and other universities. But they have now renounced him. Amen. And taken his name out of the halls of fame. Friends have now abandoned them. Further, some are facing humiliating trials and even the possibility of serving jail time. Can you imagine Bill Cosby in prison? But yes, he was found guilty of the charges brought against him. And he is now awaiting his sentence. As we all know, sexual abuse is a hard thing to endure. And it's even harder for a person to admit that they have been sexually abused. Thus, this movement has perhaps provided a much needed outlet, a much needed avenue, a much needed platform for victims to now seize this opportunity of the Me Too movement to now free themselves from the guilt and the shame of these abuses. For many of them hid the fact of their abuse. They hid it and they carried their secret shame with them all of their lives. They dare not speak of it. They dare not mention it because of who, who their abuser was. Felt like nobody will believe me. If I told you that Bill Cosby drugged me, nobody would believe me if I told them that Charlie Rose got out of the way with me. Further, amen, some of, of the, the uh, uh, abused actually set themselves up for it. Because they were trying to gain the favor. Oh yeah. They put themselves in position. Amen. To be abused. There are people that have slept their way to the top. You know it. Say amen. Hallelujah. We used to work, my husband and I, I worked there for 10 years. IBM. I've been moved. Big Blue, amen, back in the heyday. I got hired at IBM when I was 19 years old, amen. And we've seen a lot, amen, especially when we transferred to the offices and got into the corporate side. You know, I started out on the assembly line making uh, computers, you see, amen. But when we got transferred to Ohio, we went to the corporate side, the office side. 
And being multi-talented, you know, I knew how to type. So I ended up being uh, the secretary for some computer salesmen. And my husband worked in the office products division. And my God, we seen it time after time. People that were sleeping their way to promotions. Sleeping their way. Amen. And some of them were married. Amen. There was a time. Amen. Situation got so bad, especially when, uh, I know my husband remembers when, when we were making, uh, uh, working mandatory overtime. Mandatory. What does that mean? You had to do it. The only excuse was sickness or death. You had to be there. And the people were actually spending more time at work with their co-workers than they were with their spouses. Consequently, affairs. There were affairs aplenty going on in corporate life. But let's let that go. But there were some people that claim abuse that really set themselves up for it to, to gain favor. But consequently, they felt like they wouldn't be believed if they did come forth and tell their story. And, and it's a sad situation. Your heart goes out to the victims and you certainly feel that their abusers should be made to pay for their actions, especially if they're proven true. The only problem I had with it is why didn't you say something at the time that it happened? My God. But your heart goes out to them. Amen. But yet your heart goes out to the accused. Because most of these abuses took place perhaps in their younger years. Most of these abuses took place many, many years ago when perhaps the abuser and even the people that were abused, they were young and were in a whole different mindset in life. A time where they lacked self-discipline and self-control. And everybody knows that your past doesn't determine your future. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So you have some compassion even for the abuser because maybe perhaps many years ago they lacked the discipline that they now have. They lacked the character that they now developed over time. They're not the person that they were. Amen. In addition, you feel for them because you as a Christian, no better than anyone, that everybody has a past. Amen. And we shouldn't be pointing at Bill Cosby. Everybody has a past. Nobody is perfect. And in fact, no man on this earth is without sin. For the scriptures tell us in 1 John, if we say we have no sin, we lie. And the truth is not in us. Red, amen, already all have sinned and come short. So if anything, we should feel sorry for them. Amen. But we should identify because everybody has a place. Amen. Shake your neighbor and say, me too. Y'all don't want to say it. Look at you, drawn up. You got a past. Shake your neighbor and say, me too. <laughs> yeah, I got a past. My friends, one can have many opinions about the Me Too movement, yet it should cause all of us to reflect on our own lives and on our own past 
and on our own faults and sins. Further, it should give us an even greater appreciation for the blood of Jesus. Did you take note of how many in confirmation of this message, how many blood songs we sang today? It's only the blood of Jesus. Amen. And we all should be clapping our hands right now. Giving God thanks and praise for the blood of Jesus. Amen. For we know that before Christ came into our lives, we too were numbered with the transgressors. Our discretions, amen, were many. Our indiscretions and our transgressions were many. In fact, all of us have sinned. Shout me too. For we were born in sin, shaping in iniquity so much so that clearly there are some things that we never want people to know about us, nor should they know it. Amen. I listen to my husband sometime when he's preaching, and he'll just say so much. Yeah, one time I got caught, I was coming out of the wrong house. Well, tell us, brother, what happened? <laughs> now, we've been married 50 years. I don't even know if I know all the details. Sister Will, amen, but there's some things that people don't need to know about you. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Why? If I told you everything there is to know about me, you couldn't handle it. If I told you the things that even tried to work in me, amen, you couldn't handle it. You start looking at me funny. You start looking at me cross-eyed. I remember the night, amen, on a Wednesday night, and some of y'all need to start coming out on Wednesday night because you don't know what I'm talking about. Amen, but Brother Omar, stand up, honey. Now, I ain't going to say nothing. But Brother Omar, sit down. Oh, my God. He said, I was a high point baby. Oh, I was born again at high point many, many years ago. But saints, I went out. He start just naming everything that he was involved in. And oh, the saints was a squirming. Somebody go pull his coattail. Tell him he don't need to go say that. He don't need to go in the detail. But he unashamedly bared his soul. I want you to know where I came from. I want you to know how low sin carried me. I want you to know how the devil had a stronghold in my life. I want you to know how God spoke to me and told me, pick yourself up and get out of here. Put your clothes back on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But as he bared his soul, so many saints couldn't handle it. So much so till I got up after he sat down and I said, oh, Lord, how do you repair? And the Lord told me to tell the people, these young people that are coming in the church, this is what we're going to deal with. They're going to tell it like it is. They're not going to be ashamed. Hallelujah. Amen. We're living in that day. Amen. When I came along, the mothers wouldn't even talk about sex. If they heard you talking about, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shouldn't be talking about that. Keep your dress down. Keep that. No, now you got to go into detail. You got to go into detail. You got to tell me. Why I got to keep my dress down? You got to go line by line. Now, 
love you. I ain't going to go there. But you got to go t tell them more than keep your dress down. Even some experiences you've had, you've got to tell them. Why? Because I love you and I want to turn you. I don't want you to go that way. I don't want you to stoop that low. Oh, yes. You can't be, oh, I just been lily white. No, you're just a liar. God saw you baying at the moon. Y'all, don't let me go there, Lord. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. You know how it is, hormones raging. Hey, man, I kept my girls in track. Run, run. <laughs> run! 200, 400, cross country, get out in the woods. I will be there to cheer you on. Run! Run for your life. Know what I'm talking about. Yes. But I'm telling you the honest to God truth. God is the only one that can handle who you really are. <laughs> I said God is the only one that can handle. Because he's well acquainted with human frailty. He alone can handle any sin that is humanly possible for one to commit. For the Bible said he was tempted in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. Christ then serves as our primary example that it is only through his spirit that we can conquer the works of the flesh. For Paul even picks it up in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, and clearly tells us that the law of sin reigns in our members. I think it's around the 7th chapter, 7th, 8th chapter, right in there. Amen. He clearly tells us that the law of sin reigns in our members, that is, in our mortal bodies, in our flesh, which is mortal and corrupt. In fact, Paul states, no good thing dwells in our flesh. Though Paul had been saved and his mind had been renewed and God had struck him off his beast and commissioned him to be an apostle to the Gentile, yet he was still well acquainted with the war that goes on between the flesh and the spirit. For he said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Not only that, he stated that though he desired to do good, his flesh constantly sought to dominate by causing him to submit to the animalistic urges and cravings that continued to ravage and rage in his flesh. Matter of fact, it was a never-ending battle and struggle. So much so that Paul cried out, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me? Amen. From the war. Who's going to deliver me from the struggle that's going on inside me? Paul now, my friends, acknowledges that it's only through Christ that we can have the victory over our flesh. Yes, by receiving Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and by being washed in his precious blood, filled with his spirit, that is our only hope. Amen. He further admonishes us in the book of Galatians 
teaches us how to keep the victory. Notice just because you get one victory. That don't mean the devil's not coming back again, young people. Amen, Abram. Even though you escaped one time, amen, that don't mean he ain't going to try you again. Even Jesus, after he had, you know, uh, been up there 40 days and 40 nights fasting, the Bible said the devil left him for a season. In other words, the devil will leave you alone, but then he's going to come right back with another test. He's going to come right back for another trial. Amen. So Paul admonishes us in the book of Galatians and tells us how to keep the victory over our flesh. He tells us several things, but I chose this. He says, walk in the spirit. If you possess the spirit of Christ in you, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that ye would. Amen. So you've got to walk in. In the spirit, not only that, you've got to mortify the deeds of the body. There comes a time when you have to fast. Comes a time when you've got to pray. Comes a time when you have to see and not see. Hear and not hear. Speak and not speak. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You've got to crucify. Kill out. The desires that work in you. And you can't say, oh, I didn't know that was there. Yes, you did. Hallelujah. Amen. You felt your flesh rising up. Hallelujah. Now it's up to you, amen, to pull it in and say, oh, no, devil. No victory here. How am I going to get the, oh, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to call on the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to get me a good prayer partner. Amen. Because, uh, amen, there is power in uh, unity. And if one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. So I'm going to buddy up with somebody until my help comes. Amen. You don't have to fall if you don't want to. Hallelujah. You ought to have a strong constitution. I hear God saying endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You don't give in to everything and make excuses for it. Hallelujah. You put up a fight. You go down swinging. Hallelujah. So my friends, God pointed out to me through all of this and through Paul's struggle that there is another Me Too movement. For you and I can identify with Paul's experience and say, Me Too! If you're honest, you can say, Yes, Paul. I admit that I too have been torn and ravaged by the effects of sin. I too have had a never ending war that goes on in my flesh. Everybody say me too. Yes, personally, I can admit to the sin struggle. And I've seen the devastating effects and the devastating toll that sin took on my mind and on my body. Everybody shout me too. I can admit that I too was once subject to like passions and lust, uncontrollable urges and fleshly desires that were a result of an unchecked sin nature that once consumed me. Everybody shout me too. 
Yeah, Paul, just like you. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. Shout me too. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for his saving grace. And thank God for his awesome power. Somebody said, what can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So yeah, Paul, I know what you're talking about. Me too. I thank God for his shed blood and the power of forgiveness. For we are saved by grace through faith. Not only that, we've been forgiven. For the word of the Lord tells us, for such were some of you. But now you've been washed. Now you've been sanctified. Now you've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Amen. Further, God's word goes on to say, there is therefore now no condemnation. Amen. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. To those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Paul goes on to say in another passage, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit thus we are free from the law of sin and death for the law could only discover sin it could only make us aware of sin. The law could only point sin out to us. And the law could only convict us and make us feel guilty of sin. But the law could not wash us. The law could not cleanse us. That's the blood of Jesus. Shed on Calvary's cross to cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness. Amen. Not only that, somebody shout me too. I admit that when I was in sin, I was guilty. Somebody say me too. I said, I admit it. When I was in sin, I was guilty. The sin that I did, I was guilty. Amen. Yet those of us who have confessed our sins know that when we confess our sins, the Lord was faithful and just. To forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He remembers our sins no more. Further, he never, never, never brings them up again. Amen. That brings up another important point that I need to make. Amen. My friends, aren't you glad? Shake your neighbor and say, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that after being forgiven, after being washed, after being pardoned, after being justified, aren't you glad that some 20 years down the road that God doesn't drag your sins out? And, and, and reaccuse you? He don't drag your past sins out and reaccuse you of them causing you public shame and embarrassment. Ask your neighbor, aren't you glad that though the Lord knew your secret sins and your secret 
faults and the things that you spent your whole life trying to suppress. Aren't you glad that the Lord chose to cover you? I said he chose to cover you. He never let that thing be exposed. He chose to shield you. He chose to hide you. He covered you like a mother hen. Aren't you glad that he never exposed you? Aren't you glad that your sins are forgiven once and for all? Aren't you glad that the blood of Jesus has never lost its power? His blood forever covers our sins. Aren't you glad that you're justified by faith and now you stand before God as if you never sinned? Amen. Every born again believer should be happy about that. Amen. In other words, you should be so happy about it that you ought to be leaping up right now and saying, oh God, I thank you. I thank you for not embarrassing me. I thank you for covering me. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for shielding me. I thank you for hiding me. Preserving my name. Preserving my reputation. Thank you for giving me true friends. We should be happy about it. We should be happy about the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout me too. I'm happy about it. Amen. And you ought to be so happy that Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, because you ought to be so happy. And you ought to know how valuable the blood of Jesus is. Because you were part of the Me Too movement. You said. Paul said, that's why I told you, Carolyn, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, for the simple fact that God covered you, for the simple fact that God forgave you, for the simple fact that God didn't turn his back on you, for the simple fact that God raised you up in spite of. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that the least you can do is present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, under God, I don't care, amen, if you have to cry every day. Submit your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Because that is your reasonable service. In other words, all that God has done for you, get your neck down. Walk in humility, submit yourself to God. Say, God, I was the chief of sinners, but you love me just that much. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Seeing that it's only because of the Lord's mercies that you're not outed. It's because of the Lord's mercies, I said, that you're not outed. He said, if your ways please me, I'll even make your enemies be at peace with you. Hallelujah. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Amen. So we ought to be forever grateful. We ought to be determined to live a life that is pleasing to God so that we can live with him throughout eternity. That's right. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man 
whose sins are covered and to whom God doesn't impute iniquity. Are y'all hearing me? So in my closing, I will make one final part. As part of the Me Too situation that we found ourselves in because we have sinned, so we are part of that Me Too situation that I just talked about. We too know our abuser. Hey, y'all boss, y'all. I said, now just like the world is naming their abuser, we know who our abuser is and we're going to identify him today. We're going to out him and we're going to publicly shame him. Further, we're going to help see to it that somebody in here today knows that Satan's only intent is to kill, steal, and permanently destroy them. Somebody is going to leave here today washed in the blood of Jesus and the curse of sin is going to be destroyed off of their life today because we're going to name our abuser. His name is Satan. The devil is his name. Amen. Satan is his name. And, and I want you to notice, as you've noticed in most of these high-profile uh, Me Too cases, amen, uh, uh, all of the abusers have feigned innocence, and not one of them has said, I'm guilty. They're all denying the charges, but not so with Satan. Satan is going around bragging. Amen. He ain't even trying, amen, to hide what he's up to. Amen. He's clearly stated that he's going to and fro throughout the earth seeking who he can devour. He's totally unapologetic. He's totally unrepentant. And he has absolutely no concern for his victims, amen. And he absolutely is bent on our destruction. His intent is to kill, steal, and destroy the whole entire human race if it was possible. Amen. But tell your neighbor today we're going to take authority over him. We're going to take authority over him. Authority over the devil. Yes, we're calling you out, devil. We're calling you out, Satan. We're going to put you to an open shame. Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. And for through the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, we've been given power and authority over you. We take authority over suicide. We take authority over sexual sin. We take authority over homosexuality. We take authority over divorce, fornication, adultery. All of these sins, we take authority. We command you to loose your hold. God's people will be free. Amen. And further, amen. God said we will be avenged of our adversary. Amen. I told you everybody wants justice. We're going to get justice, and we've already gotten it to some degree. Amen. But God said you will be avenged by our great God, Jehovah. Our God is going to avenge us. Amen. You get glad about it and shake somebody's hand. Give them a high five and tell them God is here to avenge us today. Amen. For God is our defender. God is our rock. God is our fortress. He is our sword. He is our shield. He alone has become our salvation. I said God has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. He has pardoned us and forgiven us of all our sins and blotted out all of our transgressions. He has shed his blood to atone for our many sins and now we have been justified by faith. Now we have
peace with God. Amen. Not only that, for whom the Son has set free. Somebody say, me too. <laughs> the Lord set me free. Amen. Whom the Son has made free. It's free indeed. Amen. So Christ alone will be our defense against Satan, that great accuser of the brethren. For on that great day that has already been appointed, we're going to see Satan's final demise and ruin. For he and all of his imps are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Doomed to everlasting punishment. Amen. And we, on the other hand, we're going to be victorious. Slap your neighbor and say we are victorious. Amen. We're going to reign with Christ forever throughout eternity. For the Bible says, for in a moment, in the twinkling, of an eye at the last trump we shall be changed hallelujah God is going to change this vile body that is subject to sin God is going to change it from mortal to immortality from corruptible to incorruption Bible says that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. Amen. And say, me too. I'm going to be caught up to meet him. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Me too. I want to give him a praise. I want to give him a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. I hope you got something out of this message. Amen. I want the altar workers to come. There's someone here today, and God wants you to be part of the Me Too movement. For all have sinned and come short, but you don't have to stay. Thank you so much for joining us today. We certainly hope that you were blessed and that your heart was encouraged. Now, to those of you that don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, we say repent. Ask the Lord to come into your life. The Lord is waiting to hear from you. Now we'd like to encourage all of you to visit our website, which is www.highpointlive.org. Click on the giving link and leave a donation. Amen. Those of you that are mailing in your tithes, go to P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia, 30081. Again, that's High Point Christian Tabernacle, P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia, 30081. Now, we're going to be back with you with another blast from the past, and you don't want to miss any of these wonderful services. Now, God bless you. We love you.